All right, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, today's Firefly Developer Workshop. So this is a very developer-centric uh, session today. I have zero slides and lots of code to go through. So hopefully you're ready to get hands-on. Um, if you have not had a chance to look at the gist that I sent out ahead of time with the prerequisites, uh, I'll post that link. I'm not, uh, I'll post that link in the chat. Please look at that right now and make sure that you have the, the prerequisites installed on your machine, like Golang, Docker, and some sort of IDE. Um, you'll need that stuff set up in order to actually go through the workshop. So um, we'll go ahead and get started here. I will share my screen and we'll just talk through what today's session is going to be. OK, so, so this is kind of the setup that we'll be working with for the most part, uh, terminal on the left and the guide on the right. Um, would So th this is going to be very hands-on, very interactive. Uh, if you have questions as we go, or if you get stuck, um, please interrupt me, unmute, ask your questions. Um, we'll, we'll try to try to make this as classroom-like as possible. Uh, so I'll, I'll walk you through the guide, but this is really um, this this workshop is for you all to help you guys get your machines set up, and so that you are prepared to either a build applications on uh, yeah. So we'll, so look at the the workshop goals here. Um, so at the end of the workshop, we want to have uh, a dev environment that's capable of building apps on top of Firefly that that use Firefly. Um, and also a dev environment that's set up for if you want to make changes to Firefly itself, uh, you know where to go do that, how to do it, and you have all of the tools set up on your machine so that you can do that. Um, we'll set up some sample apps from our repos, run those, and then we'll, we'll just take a look at all of the pieces and parts that make up a working Firefly stack on your machine. So those are the goals for today. Um, any questions before we jump in here? All right, so uh, I'm going to skip over the prerequisites section. Hopefully, you had time to do that ahead of time in preparation for the session. Um, if you if you're kind of skimming through it real quick and, and checking uh, the the two things to really check for to make sure uh, that that you have everything on here are uh, to make sure you have Go installed. Uh, so I can run Go version. I've got Go 116, so I'm good there. Uh, you also will want to make sure your Go path. Er, is on your path. So um, I can, let's see, I'll echo, go path. And then uh, if I check my, my actual path, I'll see that um, this go bin directory is on the path as well. If it's not, the quick thing to do is uh, edit either so on Mac OS, it's a, a ZSHRC now or your bash RC and add a few lines to it at the bottom of it to put that on there. So this will um, this is important because we're going to install some binaries and you want those on your path so that you can actually run them. So hopefully everybody has that set up and you have at least a, a working Go environment. Uh, the other important thing is Docker and Docker Compose as well. Uh, those are usually fairly straightforward to set up. So we will skip ahead here to actually setting up Firefly. So um, Firefly CLI is a, if you've attended any of our other sessions, you've probably seen it in action. Uh, maybe you've had a chance to play with it yourself. It is, if you haven't, it's a, it's a dev tool designed to set up Firefly and all of its dependencies in a working environment on your machine. And uh, it's, it's designed to take all the hard uh, DevOps orchestration work out of the equation for setting all that stuff up. So Firefly is a, it's a, it's a distributed system. It's a microservices architecture. So there are a lot of small pieces to it in lots of different software components. And it's very modular, so you can swap components in and out. So the Firefly CLI is designed to help you manage all of that stuff. So it's pretty easy to install. If you have Go set up on your machine, you should just be able to copy this line. We'll run that and it should go install that. The, uh, even if you have it installed, um, if you've installed it previously, I would run this again because uh, we just 
released a, a new version recently. Uh, actually, I was working on it last night <laughs> to iron out a bug so that we wouldn't run into it in this workshop. Um, OK, so we'll see it's installed. Uh, if we look in my Go path now, uh, we should be able to see it in, oops, in the bin directory. And there's the FF executable. So if I run FF now, we'll see the output from Firefly. So that's installed. And I'll, I'll just I'll pause here. If, if people are having trouble installing the CLI or you can't run it, please, please let me know. Because um, you're going to have a hard time following along if you, <laughs> if you can't run the CLI. Is anybody, is anybody having trouble uh, or need some quick pointers? Nico, if you don't mind, uh, would you be able to provide a brief introduction about Firefly and the use case? When should I use it? Sure. Is that part of the agenda? Um, I, I had not planned that as part of the agenda, uh, but that's a it's a good point. I, I probably should have <laughs> should have started off with that in case uh, folks aren't familiar with Firefly. Uh, the I, my my intention was the target audience here was somebody already interested in Firefly, but needs to know how to set it up. Uh, but yeah, to just to just back up for a, a quick second. Uh, so Firefly is a, a multi-party system designed for enterprise data flows powered by blockchain. That's sort of how we describe it. So what does all that mean? It is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of software, it's many pieces of software that help, uh, multi say multiple businesses want to do uh, business transactions, and they want to use blockchain as a ledger for those transactions, and they want to do it in a secure way, and they want to do it in, uh, you know, maybe some pieces of data need to be shared with all members of the network. Uh, they're, they're doing it in, a, in a, a private blockchain, so it's it's not on, you know, Ethereum mainnet or on, on some public chain. It's a private chain, but uh, maybe not all those members of that uh, network need to be privy to all transactions. Maybe you need to share some transactions only with one member of the network, or some pieces of data need to be broadcast to all members of the network. Uh, it's, it's a way that, uh, it's a system that orchestrates all of those communications uh, in, a, in a secure, private manner, and lets developers focus on what's the business logic of the particular business problem that I'm trying to solve. And I'll leave all of the uh, you know, I need to get this piece of data from my organization to another organization securely. Uh, we'll leave that to Firefly. Well, I need to put this piece of data on the blockchain, but I need to leave this piece of data off the blockchain. Leave that to Firefly. It, it handles all of those, um, the complexity of those things for you. So it, it takes, it's, it's really about uh, accelerating the growth and the adoption of enterprise blockchain and giving a, a platform that is just an, an API that's really easy to build on. Uh, and taking away a lot of the uh, the complex or, or or even not complex but just tedious to implement, you know, all of the messaging between uh, various organizations and all the integration points, it it handles all of that for you. So that's kind of the goal of Firefly in in thirty seconds there. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to install the CLI. Uh, we will keep going here. So. Uh, the CLI, we, we talk about a stack, um, and I, I kind of borrowed this name. You know, if you're familiar with CloudFormation on AWS, you have a, a CloudFormation stack. It's just a, a set of resources that's designed defined by uh, some document. So, in Firefly, uh, a stack is uh, it's it's an entire Firefly network. So uh, we'll create one of those. So we can see when we ran Firefly, when we ran FF, the Firefly CLI, I printed out a list of things that you can do with it. And the very first thing we're going to do is do an init. So let's uh, FF init. Um, there are actually before I do that, there are lots of options on the init command if you want to customize the stack. And uh, not all of these are fully implemented yet. Yesterday on the community call, we demoed in, in a uh, in, a, in another branch of the CLI, so not in the version that you have installed. Um, you can start to use Fabric. We're also working on Besu in another branch as well. Um, you, can, you can specify a different database implementation. 
Um, SQLite 3 is the default, but there's also support for Postgres. So if you choose Postgres here, it will spin up another container for your database. Uh, so, so there's lots of different customization options when you are initting a new stack. Uh, so just wanted to point that out. But if you just go at the defaults and we FF init, it will ask you a couple of questions. Um, if you want to script this, there are ways to set all of these things ahead of time too, so it doesn't go into interactive mode. Uh, we'll call this stack name, uh, we'll just call it, oops, <laughs> I already have one called workshop. Um, so I'm just going to, I was testing that last night to make sure that this would go smoothly and uh, forgot to clean that up. So uh, I'm going to FF init, we'll call it workshop. You can feel free to name yours, whatever you would like. Uh, I'm going to make a network of two members. And there it creates it. So um, as you may have guessed, reading through the guide, Firefly CLI uses Docker and Docker Compose to orchestrate all of the infrastructure here. So it will actually tell you, hey, your Docker Compose that I just generated for you is right here. So uh, if we want to take a quick peek at that, we can do that. And there, there's a lot in here. Um, like I said, there's there's quite a few moving parts to this whole system. So that's 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 why we have the CLI is to uh, automate the generation of all of this stuff. So you don't have to do it by hand because it's um, there's quite a bit. So we have our data exchange nodes here. Uh, we have our blockchain connectors, which in this case is going to be ETH Connect. And as you'll see, for each of these, there's one for each member in the network. So uh, we're going to try to simulate things as as close to production as we can here. Uh, within reason. And uh, we'll see two Firefly core nodes. Um, you can see there are there are a lot of ports that are exposed by all of these things as well. Uh, so that's something to watch out for, uh, is just making sure that those ports are available. Usually, we don't run into problems there. but um, And the CLI will help you check for those things when we start it up. Uh, here's our, our blockchain node. And uh, IPFS nodes here for uh, file storage, and then our token connectors as well. And these are new. Um, I'm, we're not going to get into tokens today. Um, tokens is still uh, under development right now. It's it's new. It, it's there in the stack, but it's uh, it's not quite done yet. And then there's some uh, named volumes that are exposed at the end. So that's kind of that's just a, a quick peek under the hood of all the things that Docker Compose is going to do for us. So uh, now that we've got so basically when we run ff init, that just writes a bunch of configuration files to the disk. Uh, it doesn't actually start anything. It doesn't run anything. And when we run ff start, uh, we'll say workshop. I think I, in the guide, I called my stack name simple. You, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my workshop stack here. And this is going to do a whole bunch of things. So uh, a, it's going to, so right now we're, we're seeing it initializing the blockchain node. So for Ethereum, it's writing the Genesis JSON and uh, putting all of the identities on chain. Uh, it will also pull the latest versions of all of the Firefly components to make sure everything is staying up to date for you. Um, it only does that the first time that the stack launches. Uh, so when, once you launch a stack, it will stick with that version unless you run the upgrade command. Um, it will so so after it starts everything up, um, it will deploy a smart contract for you, and it will register the identities of all of the members on the network. So it's it's doing a whole bunch of things in, in addition to just starting up processes. Uh, you know, if you you could just go run Docker Compose up on that stack. Um, but then you would have a whole bunch of other manual steps that you'd need to do after that to actually get it to a usable state. So the, um, the, the, the CLI is designed to automate a lot of these steps. Um, usually it doesn't take this long to pull the latest versions. <laughs> so I'm going to actually, uh, th there's a way to skip pulling the latest. Um, so I'm going to do that. So first I'm going to, I'm going to reset this. Um, so if you pass the uh, dash n or dash dash no pull, uh, it will skip pulling the latest. And I'm not sure, maybe Docker is just um, Docker Hub or, or or something maybe having issues right now. All right, so it's copying some configs. It's starting everything up now. 
Nico, I guess there is a question, like somebody got an Sure. Question. Yep. Uh, sorry, I don't have the chat up. Uh, there was an exception I got. Okay. Um, yeah, ha happy to, well, while this is starting up, happy to help. Uh, what what exception did you get? Uh, I don't think your audio is working correctly. I'm I'm hearing a very high pitched sound. I don't know if anybody else is hearing that as well. Yes, that's better. Okay, so uh, when I was running uh, FF Start Simple, uh, it waited for some time, and then I got the Docker run error, and uh, it. It's asking me uh, error resetting stack docker compose down volume. So okay. it's not to find the file actually. So the, the first thing to check is, uh, it, it, you know, in the guide here, so make sure Docker is running. Um, not everybody has Docker set to automatically start up on their machine. So uh, ah. is, is Docker running on your machine? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me check. Uh, mm, it asked me to log in and log out. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. I just installed it. So, I will uh, reset it and then uh, I think the problem will be solved. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. And if you, you um, if for some reason you can't run FF reset on it, uh, you could also rm rf and it's going to be in your home directory in a directory called dot firefly stacks and then the the name of your stack so you could just okay. if, if you need to manually delete that directory for some reason that's where it's at yeah okay yeah perfect thanks sure yeah good good call out there yeah i uh, forgot to mention that sorry so <laughs> docker definitely needs to be running uh, the cli does not automatically start docker on your machine um so you'll you'll need to make sure that's running before you start running ff start or any of the other commands uh ff init just writes config to the disk, so it, it does not need Docker running. Um, but I think all of just about all the other ones do something with Docker. So, all right. So we've got a working stack uh, on my machine. Hopefully, you have a working stack on your machine too, or you're very close. Um, I'll, I'll try to try to keep going slow here so people can keep up. Uh, but we should be able to click on these links and see the dashboard now. And indeed, we can. So uh, we haven't run any transactions here, but we, we have a, a working stack. Um, so you'll see the, the default URL that, so that we clicked here, and this is slash UI. So you can, you can go here and you can see, uh, it kind of, we'll see there's two, sorry, this is kind of um, cutting everything off here, but so there's two network members. Uh, there have been no messages. And uh, once we start sending some stuff, we can go to the messages, the data, or the transactions tabs and inspect those. But there's nothing in here yet. Um, if we want to see the API documentation, uh, the swagger definition for everything, we can just change this from UI. We can go to slash API, and that will load this page. Um, so here we can poke around and see all the different endpoints that we can hit. Um, the kind of these are some of the important ones that we'll be focusing on today. Uh, you know, broadcasting a message and um, also sending private messages. And so, so these are the endpoints here. You can see examples and all the different fields that are on there. Um, hopefully, you should be able to pull this up on your machine as well. If um, if you're just curious to, to, to explore the API and you don't want to go through all the hassle of starting up a stack, this, this Swagger document is published as well. You can find it at labs.hyperledger.org slash Firefly, and you can go to API spec. And this, this is the same exact thing. Um, whatever is published on this page is what is in the main branch of Firefly. And I've also linked, uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the guide, um, I have linked to uh, the, this Swagger doc down here as well. Um, there's also, while we're down here, th there's also a Postman collection that you can download. Uh, if you use Postman, oh, I'm going to use it in a little bit to actually run some transactions. 
Uh, you could download this collection and it will kind of pre-populate Postman with a bunch of different requests that you can use to try out your Firefly stack that you just installed. And I think there's a note of that in the, the guide here. Yep, so I can go here, grab that, that JSON file and set that up in Postman. And uh, we can we can manually run some stuff. Um, so actually, let's let's do that now. Um, I'm gonna, oops. Let's see, I will unmaximize these things so that I can bring up Postman too. I thought I had it running. So we'll just we'll run a couple of sample messages on it just to prove that it's all working, and then uh, then what we're going to do is go get a sample app and then run that against the stack as well. Um, the sample apps are in. Uh, we could, well, Postman is coming up here. We could take a look at. Uh, well, well, we'll look at the sample apps in just a minute. All right. Uh, nope. Okay, so this is if you open up Postman and you import that collection, uh, we'll see. I called mine Firefly demo. I think you can name it when you import it. Um, let's just run a broadcast simple message. So we've got two Firefly nodes running on our, our machine right now. Um, one of them is listening on port 5000 and the other is on 5001. So we're going to we're going to send a request we, so we can access either one of them here. Normally like in production this would be um, like one organization would only have access to one and another organization would only have access to the other. Um, yep, let me, uh, let me post that link again for folks here. There you go. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be sent to the first member and this will be brought, because this is a, a message broadcast, uh, this will be sent to every member of the network. So if there was more than one other member, everybody would get this. Uh, so we'll hit send and then we should be able to go look at, uh, let's go back to the UI. And here we can see that there was a message that was sent. Um, let's open up the second members network or um, Explorer as well. And they have the message as well. So now that there's a message in here, we can go to the data tab and click on this row. And we can see there, there's the contents of the thing that we sent, foo bar. And then we can see in Postman, that's the value of what we sent here. So when you're sending a message in Firefly, um, there's a, it's, it's wrapped at a, um, so that you, you're, you're sending, you're not just sending a, a piece of data. You're sending a Firefly message that contains one or more pieces of data and some information on how to send it, who to send it to, and that sort of thing. So uh, there's, there are in the, the docs. There's lots of different, um, lots of different ways to send messages. Uh, we're not going to get into all of them today. Uh, the, the, the focus for today's session is really to to get the dev environment set up, um, and then the docs are there to kind of explore all, all the different uh, ways and features that you can use Firefly. So uh, we'll, I will show one more though. We'll send a, so now we'll, so that was a broadcast to everybody in the network. Um, we'll send a private message now. And so this one's gonna be a little different. Uh, so here, first of all, it's going to a different endpoint. So this is the messages private endpoint. And uh, we still have a, a data, array with one element here. Uh, in this case, I'm just sending the string secret message. Uh, last time I was sending, I was actually sending a JSON object. So this value can be any arbitrary JSON object. Um, for now, I'm just making it a string. And then we also have a, a group with a list of members to send it to. In this case, I'm sending it from the first node in the network, which is org zero uh, on port 5,000. And I'm going to send it to org one. Uh, so this will only be, if there were more members of the network, this would only be visible to uh, org zero and org one. So I hit send there and we'll just go hop over here make sure that we see that as well. Okay, so when, when we sent that private message, uh, the very first time we sent a message between those two, it initializes a group. So we see a group init message here. 
And uh, so that's why we see three messages, even though that I only clicked send twice. Um, so let's see. We'll go over to the data tab now and just make sure. Yep, and there is our secret message. OK, so we have a working stack. And uh, at this point, we're going to go run some sample apps against it now. Uh, I think there was another question in chat. Uh, can we implement smart contracts with Firefly? Uh, so yes, their their Firefly has its own smart contract that it's that it's executing right now. Uh, if the question is about can you write your own custom smart contract and use Firefly to run that, uh, the answer is coming very soon. Uh, that's one of the next major things in the Firefly project that we'll be working on. Um, in in yesterday's community call, we demonstrated. Um, so what one of the goals of Firefly is to be very modular, very pluggable and, and open. So um, it, it supports, right now we're, just, we're using Ethereum because that's just the default. Um, but yesterday we demonstrated all the same functionality working on Fabric as well. Um, so now that we have support for multiple different types, completely different types of blockchains, uh, we'll be building on top of that, the ability to run custom smart contracts as well. Uh, but we wanted to wait until we had support for different types of blockchains so that uh, we designed uh, custom smart contracts in a way that worked across blockchains and so that it wasn't just pigeonholed into, into one specific one. So coming soon and uh, very excited for that as well. All right, I'll, I'll pause here. Any other questions on, uh, hopefully, hopefully you've been able to get a stack up on your machine and you've been able to send a couple of messages. Um, please, you know, raise your hand or, or, or unmute if you are stuck or have questions. We'll pause here for just a minute to make sure that everybody is kind of keeping up. I, I hear somebody talking, but it's um, it, it sounds like chipmunks. Sorry, <laughs> the audio is not good. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, that's much better. OK, so. Um... I'm running into some trouble because of Docker. Uh, I install, installed it on Windows and it says uh, WSL2 installation is incomplete. And I'm running it on Windows 10. Okay, so. Uh, install Linux kernel. Yep, um, it, it is, it's possible to do some of this on Windows. Um, and and I think if you're running WSL two, it is it's I, I think it's possible to do all of it. Um, I unfortunately that is like the most complicated setup possible for this, and I, I, we don't have time today to to walk through getting uh, WSL two set up on Windows. Uh, there's there's some great guides elsewhere on the internet on yeah. how to set up that type of environment. Um, uh, just I wanted to ask: Is it is it normal to have this problem on Windows? So I can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. So so okay. if if you have WSL two set up and you're able to run Docker in mm -hmm. the 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 Linux, um, I don't know if it's I don't know if container is the right word, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just I'll, if you're able to run uh, Docker in the Linux environment on Windows, mm -hmm. you should be able to run through all of this. Um, and and I have done that in the past. So it. It is possible, um, it, but it is complicated to get set up. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's uh, really better to prefer like Ubuntu for this development. Is it it's more recommended. It's it's probably it's probably easier to to okay. get set up. Yeah. yeah. And and really that's just the complexities of how Linux and Windows work together today in in the current version of Windows. It yeah. it has less to do with uh, Firefly itself. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Yep. Uh, there was a question about the recording for Fabric. Yes. Um, later today, it will be up on the the Hyperledger Wiki in the the Firefly Lab page. Uh, we we have a, a page for for every community call, and the recording will be up there. I haven't had a chance to post yesterday's recording yet, but I'll, I'll do that later today. All right. Great questions. Um, any other? Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate the, the link there. Any other yeah, questions I, before we go on? Yeah, yeah. I, this is Sudan. 
So I have a question. While you set up in the Firefly, you mentioned the me member is two, correct? Whether that member is uh, party to the organizations or what is that? Yeah. So uh, if we go look at the dashboard, uh, we'll see there are there are two members. And if we go, mm -hmm. let's see, where's another good place to show this? Um, we can actually query Firefly and see, um, if we look at the API, uh, we can do a get on network organizations. And where's the try it out button? There it is, sorry, it's at the top. Execute. And you could do this from Postman too. I don't have it in the collection though. Um, so here's, so this basically, I just asked my local Firefly node, hey, get me the list of everybody that's in the network, all the organizations. Um, and there's there's separate endpoints for all of the uh, the node or, or the member, sorry, all of the nodes that are in those organizations. Uh, but we can see there's there's two orgs here, um, org zero and org one. So this is me, I'm, I'm org zero from the, Oh, actually, sorry, I, I did this request from uh, 5001. So, so this would be me, org one here. And this is uh, org zero, who's the, the other member of the network. So in the real world, uh, this would be probably one company and this would be some other company that have entered into some sort of consortium uh, and that want to do business transactions with each other, uh, but want to use blockchain, want to keep some some pieces of data private or some public, and uh, but but they want to do transactions with each other. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. So my next question is, uh, if if in Ethereum we making our own product in Ethereum means for each transaction we need to spend some ether, correct? So for com coming to the Firefly, so how did we work? Um, so so was the the question about uh gas and the, the cost yes. of the transaction. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Correct. so so the short answer is it's free. Um, this is a this is a privileged network. It's a, it's a private. So we're not running on Ethereum mainnet here. Uh, so this is I, I actually if we go look at let's let's take a minute to to look at what's running on my machine, uh, because this is something I wanted to show everybody as well. So I'll just open up my Docker dashboard here and we can see in the workshop stack. Um, there, I have a, a Go Ethereum or Geth node running on my machine. And this, um, this machine is, this, this Ethereum node is set up in a private chain. So when the Firefly CLI started up, it created its own blockchain. It created its own Genesis block and then gave it to this node and said, hey, start a completely new chain. And uh, in that chain, gas is free. And so anytime you're running transactions in the private network, it's free, there's no cost to run a transaction. Uh, it's, it, it just works fundamentally differently uh, because the, the economy, if you will, is different in a, in a private privileged network than it is on a public blockchain. Okay, so then for each member will get a, a separate public and private address, correct if I am? Yes. So, so each member, if we look here, uh, this you can see that this is their uh, their Ethereum address that's on chain, and uh, they they also each one of those has a private key as well. Um, you can't see that from this interface, but yes, there there is a private key for each one. Okay. Yeah, I'm done with my question. Okay. Cool. Hopefully, hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, there's another question in chat. Can you? Please go through the left side menu again, if possible. A one-line explanation. Um, are you talking about on this page over here? This this menu? Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So this is um, so the Firefly Explorer is um, it's just a, a way to look at the system and see what what's going on inside Firefly. Um, it's not a this is not a a it, you probably won't use this in production. Um, but it's it's this is a tool for when you're building your app to see hey what did I I, I made a post request what happened uh, who got the data what does it look like on the other side so uh, the def this is the default dashboard it's just sort of a summary um, I can go to the messages tab and I can see uh, these are the individual messages that have been sent um, and then then there's data and transactions and so so the differences between all these things are um, when when I make a post, I send a message. A message, uh, if we go back and look at Postman, 
this is an array. So I could have multiple data items in here if I wanted to. So one, one message could have could result in multiple pieces of data sent here. Um, if lots of messages are going through the system all at once, they could be, uh, Firefly will batch things for better throughput. And so those could all get rolled up into one transaction that Firefly will, um, it sort of, it, it buffers things and it will hash and write things to the blockchain all at once in a batch. And so, so that if you're sending requests fast enough into the system, you'll see you actually have fewer transactions than you have messages sent through the system. And uh, you may have, depending on if, if each of those messages had more than one data element, you could have more pieces of data than you do messages. So ho hopefully that makes sense and kind of the, the difference in, in all three of those. And this is just a, a way to, to view each of the three um, you know, messages, data, or transactions. And the dashboard shows the overview. All right, uh, we'll do a couple more questions here. And then uh, I do want to, let's see. Um, yeah, we've got about a little, little less than 20 minutes left. So I want to want to kind of get back on track here in just a minute. Uh, for Fabric, I'm sending private messages between different orgs. Will Firefly create separate channels for each pair of orgs, private data collections? Um, yeah, so it's a great question. So uh, that, that, that topic actually came up on the community call yesterday. Um, the short answer is there's more work to be done to support multiple channels right now. Um, so the Fabric support is, is not fully released yet, but it's we, we showed it working <laughs> yesterday. Um, so as of today, there's one channel that it uses, uh, but that's that's not the the end game there. Um, there's there's more work to be done in Firefly to support multiple channels. But um, the short answer is it will be flexible and it will be up to you in whatever, um, if, if lots of channels works and that's what you need, you'll be able to do lots of channels. Um, if you need very few channels, you'll be able to do that as well. So, um, but there, there is more work to be done on Firefly itself to support that. Okay, um, I'm going to pull up the the guide again. Where did that go? Oh, it's right here. All right, so let's let's run some sample apps now. So I'm going to clone. There's another repo in uh, in Hyperledger Labs Firefly repos called. Uh, Firefly samples. So I'm going to clone that. Uh, so this is a Node.js app. Uh, this is meant to be um, just a, a, an approachable, like very simple, like, hey, here's how you write some code that sends a, a transaction to Firefly. Uh, so it's going to be doing basically the same thing we just did in Postman manually, but with some code. Uh, so we'll go into that directory. Uh, we'll run, actually, so in here, we've got a, a CLI example and a UI example. So we'll run the CLI one first. Um, so we'll go into the directory, oops. And we'll just NPM install that. Um, and these commands are, are right here in your guide too, if you're following along. So that's gonna go get dependencies and set that up. OK, now we should just be able to NPM start. And like I said, this is super simple. So all this is going to do is going to start up. It's going to broadcast to a message with two data elements, hello and world. And then it's going to make sure that it receives them on the other end. And it sure did. So it sent it from what it calls Firefly 1. That's on port 5000. And it sent it to Firefly 2. And this guy got it. So here. Uh, this sample actually demonstrates listening on a WebSocket as well. Um, we'll just go peek at the uh, at the dashboard again, so we can look at let's look at the data. Okay, so here's yeah, so here's hello and here's world. So these two data items were sent in this message right here, and we can see yeah, so there this one had two pieces of data in it. Uh, let's go to the other member and see if it got that message as well. Yeah, so here's a broadcast. Take a look at that one. And there's there's the hello world message that it received there. So super simple. Um, we want to open up Visual Studio Code and take a look at what this sample is doing. Um, we can see it's, it's essentially just doing what we did in Postman. Uh, we'll look at 
so so there's this is basically just the um, kind of the flow through the thing here. We define the data, and then we we broadcast it. And then in Firefly TS, um, so this is this is a TypeScript application. We define some basically just the, the data types, and we define a. So this is. Um, if, if you wanted a, a simple example of a WebSocket listener, this is a good place to look, actually, um, if, if you're interested in doing it in TypeScript or, or JavaScript on Node. Um, so, so this is going to basically, the, uh, it's going to make an API request to send the message, but then it's listening to this, the other Firefly node on a WebSocket for that message to come all the way through the system. So uh, you get kind of both, both sides of it here. And then here's the, uh, the simple HTTP requests to actually send that message. So very, very simple sample, um, you know, less than 100 lines of code in this one. The, there is a, a UI version as well. Um, so if we go into that one, uh, what's it called? Yeah, private data transfer UI. Um, I, I'm not going to go through this. I think this one uses React, and it might take a little longer to install. Um, I'm not going to go through and run all of this one right now, but uh, I'll just give you a quick, quick tour of what that one looks like. Um, so this one will send. Th this one ha it has a couple drop-down menus. Um, it will send either private messages or broadcasts. Um, the the name is actually we, we should rename it. It's a little bit of a misnomer right now. Um, so it it has a it's just a very simple like front end and back end. So here's some some routes that it defines uh, for the the web page interface to hit, and then um, that that back end will take care of making the requests to Firefly. Um, so that's what we've got in here. Um, here's our our app TSX. So this is this is the front end. Um, yeah, it's going to complain because I don't have all the dependencies installed. Um, and this is, um, if, if you're familiar with React development, this should look fairly straightforward. Um, if you're not, this is probably super confusing. <laughs> um, but that's, this, this is an example of a, a front end and a back end that you can use uh, if you're curious on how to put one of those together. So um, at this point, let's see, I want to um, make sure we get through the, the good stuff in the amount of time we have left here. So, Kind of looking at our goals, uh, what have we accomplished so far? Uh, we have a we have a dev environment that is capable of building apps on Firefly. We just showed um, downloading and building and running an app on Firefly. We've made some manual Postman requests to it, um, but we haven't. Um, we've, we've we've run sample apps on the machine, and hopefully you're you're getting a working understanding of the components. <laughs> we'll. Um, this that that may be that may be a stretch because there's a lot going on here, but um making uh, making changes to firefly itself is the the major thing that i want to get into now so we we're super excited that lots of people are interested in firefly and we would love to have more contributions to it we would also love if people are really passionate about it and really want to get involved we'd also love more maintainers on on the projects as well there are a lot of different repos in firefly i've linked to all of the different repos here at the bottom um a variety of languages that are used in them. So you, you don't necessarily need Golang expertise to, to be a contributor or even a maintainer on some of these. So uh, if, you're, if you're really interested, definitely check them out. Please reach out to us. Um, we, we would really like to get more contributors. So this is uh, that's the goal of today's session. OK, so so far we've run Firefly, but we haven't actually downloaded the source code for any of the Firefly repos itself. So we're going to do that now. Um, so this is uh, we're, we're we're really shifting gears here now. Uh, I'm going to go back up to my just sample directory here that I made. Um, we're going to go grab the source for Firefly Core, and uh, we're going to download that. So Firefly Core is um, it's it's an orchestration engine. It is sort of the thing that communicates to all of the other different parts of the stack. So it's communicating to uh, public storage nodes. It's co uh, communicating to uh, a blockchain connector, to uh, private data exchanges, 
to token connectors and uh, to a database, and it's it's handling all of the the message flow for you. Uh, so it's it's sort of um, it's it's the orchestrator, but all of the hard work, all of the 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 real the valuable work is done by everything around um, around it. Well, that's not to say that what Firefly does isn't valuable, but for instance, the, the blockchain work itself is is actually done by, uh, by by the blockchain node. It's and Firefly is really orchestrating all of those things together. All right, so we've downloaded the code for it. Um, let's go in and uh, we've we've gone into that directory now. Uh, so. Um, I can compile Firefly by running make, and let's just do that right now. This will run through all of the unit tests, and it will just, it'll make sure that you have a, a working Firefly binary here at the end of it. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to I'm going to stop the the stack that I have running. Um, so I'm going to run ff stop workshop. And uh, I would recommend if, if you have a stack running, I'd recommend you stop yours as well. Um, and here's why. So, so what we're going to do is when, when I'm doing development, I like to be able to connect a debugger to whatever I'm working on. And um, if, we, if you remember when we looked at my Docker dashboard earlier, everything was, was running in Docker. Um, and that's cool. It's, it's hard to debug when the thing that you're running is built in a Docker image that's published somewhere else, and it's it, it's just it's complicated. So, th to me, it's a lot more straightforward if I can just debug a process that's running on my host machine, and um, and, and I can just go with that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a different stack now, and this stack is going to have all of the components that we had before, except it's going to be missing one Firefly core node, and that Firefly core node we're going to run on our local dev machine. Uh, on the host machine. And uh, it's going to, through the magic of port forwarding, be able to talk to all the, the dependencies inside that Docker Compose stack. Um, but we're going to be able to pause it. We're going to be able to step through in our debugger and do all of these things. So that, that's the goal that we're working toward. All right, so while this is building, looks like there was one more question. How can we disable Firefly when moving to production environment? Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. If Firefly is designed to be a, a production uh, system. And so, so maybe is there a certain part of it, Haseeb, that you're interested in, uh, in disabling? I'm not entirely sure I, I follow that question. Sorry. OK, maybe we can come back to that. All right, so it has built. Uh, if I look here, I have a Firefly binary that has been built now. And so OK, so we've stopped the stack. We'll just keep going through the guide here. Um, so now I'm gonna we're gonna create that new that new stack that I was talking about that's that's missing one. So uh, we we'll kind of talk about in the guide here the this external flag will indicate to the CLI that I want to run one of these nodes outside of the the rest of the stack. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna call this one. Uh, we'll call it Dev Two because I think I already have a a Dev stack. Uh, I'm gonna say it has two members. And it's going to generate all the config for me. Um, I'm going to ff start dev underscore two. And I'm going to run that. And so what will happen here is it'll go through all the same initialization steps. And then it will pause. Uh, so I'm going to open up a new terminal here. And this is the one that I'm going to run. Um, Code workshop Firefly. This is the one I'm going to actually run my uh, local Firefly on my host machine in. And so, at a certain point, as it's running through here, it will uh, it will tell us when it's time to run Firefly. And it will also um, you can see in the guide here. This is a sample of what it'll look like. So it'll say, hey, please start your Firefly core with a config file that points to uh, this particular file.
Okay, there we go. So it says, uh, and it, it will print out the config file that you should use. So I'm going to just paste that command over in this terminal. I'm going to run it. And then macOS will ask me if I really want to allow it to listen on a port. So we'll see Firefly core come up over here. And then basically this, the CLI sits there and it waits for something to be listening on that port. And as soon as it sees that that port is available, it will continue its setup. So, so this is this is super handy because there's a lot there's there's some API calls that need to be made when this thing first comes up uh, to get it to uh, like we said deploy that smart contract register the members and um, get everything set up. Oh, and an error occurred. Lovely. Um, <laughs> I I will look at that uh, in a little while here. So. If something goes wrong, and sometimes it does, especially when you're doing development, um, the CLI will will roll all of the changes back. So it will try to get everything back to a clean slate so that you can run this again. Um, and hopefully it'll work the second time. I'm, I'm not actually sure what went wrong here. Um, it looks like it might've been something with uh, with tokens or, or one of the newer things in here. So I'll, I'll look at this offline. Um, I, I do want to point out, though, and I realize we are running out of time. Um, so there's, I, I really want to show you how to connect a debugger to it. Um, so we'll we'll just talk through that real quick. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code in the in the Firefly repo, and there is a so so you don't have to use Visual Studio Code. Uh, you could use your own IDE if you want. I know there's there's other uh, Go editors out there that that are also good, but Visual Studio Code is just the one I use. Um, in the repo, there's a launch.json file for VS Code. And if you've named your stack dev, it already has a thing that's ready to go here. So I could, um, I, I called mine dev2, but if you, if you called it dev, I could literally just come in here and hit F5 and run it. And then if the rest of the stack was running, uh, it would connect to it and then it would be it would work, and then I could go into any of the um, any of the source code files here, uh, say in uh, in batch pin, and you know anytime uh, anytime I'm submitting a, a a pinned batch, I could put a breakpoint in here, and I could inspect this code. Um, unfortunately, the stack didn't come up correctly, so I, I can't actually demo the debugger working and actually stepping through the code, which is what I really wanted to show. Um, but but that that is the process that I use to um, to actually set up the the code base and um, be able to set up an environment because there's in order to actually run this code that I'm looking at here, there's a whole bunch of dependencies. You need a database, you need a blockchain, you need um, there's a bunch of stuff. And so the, the CLI is really the tool to lean on to to help you set all of those things up. Um, but the using the external flag and setting up the stack the way we just did. Um, that's that's the way to basically let the CLI handle all the hard work of, of doing everything outside of Firefly and let you focus on, um, hey, I just I just want to focus on the Firefly code base itself and build. Maybe it's a new plugin. Maybe it's um, you know, maybe maybe it's an enhancement or bug fix or, or um, anything like that. So um, that brings us to the end of the guide. Uh, I left uh, a lot of different references here at the end of it. Um, including lots of different uh, things, places you can go for more documentation. There is, uh, there, there's another, so I, I sort of built this guide from a combination of these pages. So if you want to go read up more on this or, or walk through it on your own, um, you can either follow this guide or read through the documentation pages there. And I've linked to all the rest of the Firefly repos here. Um, and again, CLI is setting up all of these for you, but if you want to go poke around into uh, what all it's setting up, you can go into each one of those there. So uh, I think we are about at time, uh, but that is the the end of the material that I had to go through today. Thank you very much for attending, and uh, just really, um, really excited that that lots of people are interested in, in getting involved. And I hope today's session was helpful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nico. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Awesome. Yes. I I do have time to. I, I realize we're at time, but if people have questions or or have things they want to discuss, I'm I'm happy to hang around afterward and, and talk with you all if you uh, are interested.
So I think there are some questions you can look into the chat. Cool. And I think how we can disable Firefly when we production. Yeah, so, so um, I, I see there was a clarification on there. Um, so Firefly is, uh, is, is, Firefly is designed as, a, as an enterprise grade production system. Uh, the CLI itself is a, is a development tool. Uh, so, so hopefully that helps clarify it. So, uh, if you're going to, if you want to use Firefly in production, you, you don't want to use the CLI to set it up. You'll want to. Um, there's there's a lot more things that you'll need to consider there in terms of network access, uh, security, um, and you you will. Um, there's, yeah, you'll want to have control over all the things that the CLI is doing for you. It's the CLI is basically. Going okay, or I'm going to pick reasonable defaults for a local development environment. Um, so, but but Firefly itself it is designed to be used in production. Uh, we we use it in production, and uh, it yeah, it's great. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I will post this recording to the Hyperledger YouTube and then Wiki Hyperledger Wiki. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your time and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you.